If you know what Teamux and Screen are, then you can put Zalij in the same category. If you don't, then here's a quick introduction. If you love spending time in a terminal, then Zalige is your workspace management tool. At the most fundamental level, Zalige allows you to open and run multiple terminals at the same time. As you progress from that usage, you'll discover splits, tabs, and floating panes. Starting your projects in the morning will be a breeze with KDL-based layouts that you can kickstart in the morning, detach, and reattach to later in the day whenever you want. And a WASM-based plugin system means you can extend Zalige with any functionality that you want. Some examples of this include a file browser or just the status and tab bars that come with Zalige in the first place. Let's start with the basics. Once you have Zalige installed, you can start it up by running Zalige. In this case, I'll choose to name the session so we can access it later. And you can see the session name at the top of this workspace. The default layout includes help and usage information for new users at the bottom of the screen. This help information can be removed in the future when you're more familiar with the key bindings. The help information separates the commands we can run into logical categories. To start, we'll open a new pane using Control P and then N. Zalige automatically chose a location for this new pane, and that's typically to the right or the bottom of the pane that you opened. We can then navigate between the two panes by hitting Control P and using the arrow keys or H, J, K, L if that's more your vibe. Opening a new pane now with Control P and then N will split the right-hand side into a vertical layout. If we hit Control H, we can now move the panes around using HJKL again, or arrow keys if you prefer. If we run a command on the left-hand side and there's more output than we can show in a single frame, you can pick up your mouse and actually just scroll up. You can also, instead of scrolling, search or open the scroll back buffer in your editor of choice. With at least three panes, we can see how swap layouts work. To make it really clear, I'll add another pane to reach four. And then if you check out the indicator in the bottom right down here, it says vertical. Using Alt in the square bracket, we'll cycle through the swap layouts. In this case, we have stacked, and then we also have horizontal. The stacked swap layout allows us to minimize panes we aren't using while still being able to access and see the titles for each of them. If we navigate from one to another, it opens up and shows the others surrounding it. Similar to what you might be used to in a desktop environment, we can create either floating frames or pop one of these out into a floating frame. Control P E will pop out the existing pane that we're in into a floating frame. And then Control P N will create new panes in that floating context. Floating panes can be hidden and shown at will without affecting the content inside of them, so we'll always be able to access that later. If we create another one, we can see that we can navigate through these just as we did before, but we are locked into the floating pane context, so we won't be escaping these floating panes unless we hide them again. With a set of floating panes, we can take advantage of swap layouts again. The default view in the bottom right is called staggered, but we can reach the spread or enlarged swap layouts by doing Alt and square bracket again. As we covered before, you can scroll back with the mouse if the buffer is too large to show in the pane. If we wanna search any of the output, we can do Control S and then S again, type in our search, hit enter, and then use P and N to go up or down in the search matches, finding anywhere there's info, for example. Similar to creating new panes, we can also have a set of tabs with their own panes. If we do Control T and then N. If we do Control T and R, we can rename the name of this tab set. In this case, I've chosen Rust Adventure Wasm and I've saved it. Renaming tabs can be quite useful if you are saving them for different contexts. A heavier weight solution though, for managing groups of tabs or workspaces is detaching and reattaching from sessions. With Control O and D, we've detached from our session. With the list sessions command, we can find the session that we just had or any that we've created since then. In this case, because we have the name or a generated name if you didn't give one when you started, we can reattach to that session using Zalij Attach. And we've got all of our tabs and all of our processes still running, still together, everything's ready to go. If you like a particular workspace setup, you can write a file out with KDL to define that layout and load it when you start Zalij. Personally, I see this being really useful for repeated out of context tasks, like connecting temporarily to a database and querying it. I also see this useful for project specific setups. If you've got a project that needs to run a number of tasks every time you open it, maybe you open those background tasks in a second tab and open the files that you're going to edit in the primary tab. Layouts of course can get as complicated as you need them to be, including opening different files, starting different commands, wrapping panes using tabs, or even setting up a file tree 
to open files. Zillij has a number of features that are deeper than the layouts and sessions that we've already covered. For example, if we open another terminal, we can use Zillij run with a command and that command will open inside of our active session. We can target this to any session. So imagine integrating this with your favorite application launcher like Alfred. This allows you to do pretty much anything you can do already inside of Zillij, including opening new panes, running commands, or editing files. Further than that, there's a plugin system designed to accept any program that can compile to Wasm. So yes, Rust is supported. In fact, even the status and tab bars are plugins themselves, and you can remove or change them at will. Plugins can encapsulate entire functionalities like a file browser or simpler tasks like starting a Pomodoro timer. Overall, Zillij has come a long way, and I'm pretty excited to see what the future of the project holds. If you've watched this far, let me know in the comments how much time you spend in a terminal, and if Zillij is something that you'd consider using. I'll see you next time, and have a great rest of your day.